Joining us on WPHY Verizon Channel 28 and WIMG 1300 AM, welcome to Trenton Talks, uh, Trenton Board of Ed TV radio broadcast. We air every week on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. We are broadcast on w, WPHY Verizon Channel 28 on Thursday at 11 p.m. and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on WIMG 1300 AM. Uh, we have a great broadcast scheduled for you this after, this evening, this afternoon. I want to first introduce our assistant superintendent, Wilfredo Ortiz. I also want to introduce uh, Jonathan D. Simone, uh, one of our supervisors of uh, career and, and college readiness, as well as Denise Kreese, our homeless parent coordinator, homeless liaison, uh, and our special guest tonight uh, from TRIO, from Mercer County Community College Educational Talent Search. Uh, Director Peggy Brown, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and the folks that are on her team tonight, Tashelle Walters and uh, Stephen Bryant, we welcome you to the broadcast this evening. So we're really excited about, about the, the broadcast this evening. I hear we're talking about TRIO and our, our partnership with Mercer County Community College and the Educational Talent Search. Uh, Ms. Ms. Peggy Brown, can you can you give us an overview of TRIO Educational Talent Search and the services that you're offering to uh, Trenton Board of Ed, Trenton Central High School students? Okay, um, Talent Search is one of the one of the programs in what we call federal TRIO programs, which were established with the Higher Education Act of 1965. Um, there are eight TRIO programs that support students from pre-college, from middle school, all the way to a doctoral degree. TRIO is in all of the, uh, all of the United States, as well as the United States territories. There are about 300,000 students that are being served. Um, there are about 4,000 projects all over the United States and in the United States territories. So educational talent search is just one of, of it's just the part of such a big family. Um, and all of these programs are to get students um, out of um, graduating from high school into um, college, completing college, um, all the way up to a doctoral degree. So we have been at um, the talent search project at Mercer County College, Mercer County Community College has been there since 1980. It came right after the Upward Bound program that was established there in 1979. Um, so we've been working with um, Trenton Public Schools for all of that time, starting with the middle school. Um, and our, our, our main goal is to get our students graduated from high school and into uh, a higher education institution and to have them graduate. And we actually have to track them to see if they've graduated from post-secondary education. We had to start doing that three years ago. And I'm happy to report that we have some really good numbers on that um, with students graduating primarily with uh, graduating primarily with a bachelor's degree, but some of them with master's degrees also. Um, um, so our program counselors work directly with the students at the high school um, and the middle school. Um, Dunn Middle School is our only um, target middle school in Trenton. Um, we work with Ninth Grade Academy. We work with Trenton Central High, uh, high School and Daylight Twilight also. And our program counselors are here, um, Tichelle, um Walters and Stephen Bryant. And I'm going to let them um, tell you what they do because they work directly with the students. Okay, thank you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. So what we do is when we go to the high school, we recruit the students for our program. So the things that we do, we do throughout the school day. For the most part, we go, we take them on college tours, help them kind of figure out what kind of college they may be interested in going to. So we're doing college exploration. We do career exploration as well for the younger grades as well as the older grades so that they can start thinking about what it is they want to do when they get out of a high school and what kind of career they wanna have. We, we provide them with financial literacy, along with financial aid assistance, the college application process assistance. We also help them with kind of understanding high school a little bit on how to, gather, how to navigate through high school, 
so that they can be as successful as they want to be. So um, that's essentially what we do, career exploration, college exploration, taking them on college tours, helping them with the financial aid. We provide fee waivers for the SAT and the ACT. I mean, all these things to help them get throughout high school and then on to post-secondary education. And, and certainly with respect to uh, what you've uh, shared, Tichelle, we also provide it in a, in a, in a non-invasive context, right? So, you know, in terms of talking to the students, certainly the Trenton community offers a, a plethora of different programming. And so it affords students an opportunity not to be overwhelmed by what we're offering, but to be in support of what we're offering. So they ask all the time, is this an after-school program? <laughs> we are not an after-school program in that formal sense, although we are available until five o'clock each day, right? Uh, and so they can call us up and we can work with them uh, throughout the entire uh, experience throughout the academic year, almost at, at in terms of their time frame. And so I think that's one of the unique advantages because they they often ask, well, is it going to tie up my Saturday? What does it look like after school? <laughs> and those kind of things. So so in that sense, um, we are available to help them transition, as Tichelle mentioned, uh, but without all of the extra components that they feel may burden them down at any given moment. Although we see that the uh, it intensifies in terms of them reaching out to us in their senior year when they're realizing that the transition is coming. <laughs> yes, and I just want to add that our program is really here to, to Talent Search is here to support the counseling function, the school right. counseling function. Um, and the, one of the good things is that we were just refunded for the next five years for $1.8 million. Congratulations on the 1.85. And that, that, that gets you, you said five years? Over five years. So we'll be here um, for the next five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, and looking to get refunded again after that. Yes. So that's good news. That's good news. Since 1980, that's over 40 years. Yes. Um, that Mercer County Community College through Trio Talent Search has been working with uh, Trenton Central High School, Ninth Grade Academy, Dunn Middle School. Um, they like Twilight School. We didn't have Ninth Grade Academy 40 years ago, but no. <laughs> just to give you a sense of the, 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 the scope uh, that number of students that you've lodged, that you have touched uh, in that time frame, And since you've been there since uh, 2014, um, you know, we're looking at what's uh, almost over seven, seven years or so uh, that, that you've been there. Um, what has been the success rate of students? You mentioned that you, you're having numbers where you're looking at the number of students that are graduating, not only with a bachelor's degree, with a master's degree, uh, can you share some of those numbers with us in terms of the number of students or percentage of students who are uh, graduating with from high school and going on to post-secondary and getting their bachelor's and master's degrees? Okay, so um, I've been here at the college um, with Talent Search since 2003, but I've only been the director since 2014. So our numbers, um, we are mandated by the U.S. Department of Education, and we're we're um, we're graded every year on our annual performance report um, to see if we have accomplished what we're supposed to accomplish. So we have um, the first um, objective. They're called objectives. We have six. We're to serve 680 students a year. Um, our our persistence rate um, with students. Um, moving from one grade to another has to be 85%. Um, our graduation rate has to be 75%. Graduation with the rigorous, um, from a rigorous program of study has to be 75%. Our post-secondary enrollment rate has to be, um, uh, has to be 70%. Our, um, our post-secondary attainment graduation from a college within 16 years, excuse me, within six years has to be over, has to be 25% or over. I'm happy to say that we, for since 2006, we have exceeded all of those. Um, we have been for, for um, post-secondary enrollment, which is the bottom line, well, actually the bottom line now is post-secondary attainment. But post, for post-secondary enrollment, we've been anywhere from 74 to 85% um, since 2006. So um, 
and for post-secondary attainment for the last three years since we've had to report that, it has been 37%. And that's a very good rate. Yes, I'm impressed by, by the work that, that, that you've done. I mean, that really should be something that we celebrate. Um, you know, we, we all, a lot of folks always talk about and share some of all the things that are wrong. Uh, we need to celebrate and acknowledge the great work uh, that you're doing at, at Mercer County Community College TRIO program, uh, the Talent Search program. Um, so how, in, ter in terms of um, parents' involvement um, and parent participation, uh, do you see a lot of our parents participating with their young, young children uh, throughout the program and really being engaged in the process uh, with, the, with the TRIO Talent Search? We do see some, since our numbers are so large of students, we don't see a lot of parent involvement, but usually when they're um, in their senior years, we'll see parents um, escort their um, child down to our James Kearney campus. And, and they're very involved. To show you might, you've been involved with some of these occasions. You might want to share some of that. Yeah, so like Peggy said, since we do work with such large numbers of students, we do have like pockets and handfuls of parents that are more involved when they come their senior year because we need tax papers to help with the financial aid process and all those things. So normally their senior year is when we see the most amount of uh, parents involved, but throughout the time, sometimes the younger students as well, like the ninth graders, parents are, are more involved because they're just starting high school. And so they're more involved at, at that point as well. And when we have, when we were going on overnight college tours and things like that, then the parents will also have to get involved because we're taking their, their child, you know, way overnight. So, you know, we'll see involvement during that time as well. And what are some of the upcoming, can you share some of our, um, our um, upcoming activities uh, to Shell and, and Stephen? So some of the upcoming activities, we are uh, working with the staff at the high school to be able to, to do financial aid workshops for the seniors, um, because that's, that's apparent October 1st. In a couple of days, they're gonna start to be able to fill out their FAFSA. So we're working with the counselors to, to make that time to be able to present to the students, um, as well as we are in the works of trying to plan some physical college tours. Um, now we have to, we're at the hands of the colleges because of, you know, COVID and the restrictions, but th those are the things that we have planning. We're trying to get the students out to the campuses so that they can be able to experience that campus life. Absolutely. And I think uh, you made mention to the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, um, better known as financial aid, right? So everybody wants to know well, where's the money, right? Uh, where's the loot? Where's the beef, right? <laughs> How do I pay for this? And so uh, what you mentioned to show certainly accurate, and that's what we want to do. Uh, those deadlines are important. So understanding when the financial aid form is due is going to help students in terms of the transitioning, as you all know, into the first year experience. Uh, so that's coming up, as uh, Shell mentioned, the uh, college tours are coming up, and certainly we want to reach out and do that. And then we have a, a, an also transitioning into college. So we're going to be doing a series of workshops for students trans transitioning into their first year experience uh, so that they understand how to hold on to whatever they have achieved in terms of either need-based funding or merit-based funding. So uh, we're going to teach them how to navigate uh, dealing with professors in the first year experiences, uh, how to register for your classes, how to deal with the registrar, the bursar, et cetera. I think those are critical to students transitioning in, as we know, so they can get off to a great start in their freshman year. So those are some of the things looking in career, looking at career exploration, as already, already been mentioned, uh, we will be working with students. A lot of students uh, know what they want to do, but then there are those who may not necessarily know, which is okay as well. And so we'll be working with um, career development uh, opportunities as well. So we hope that people and students uh, take advantage of that. I'd like to ask a question, uh, Wilfredo Ortiz, if I may. Um, I'm always concerned about uh, financial aid. And I feel that we have to do a better job at the school level uh, to get our students ready and to fill and complete the application. What we find as a former guidance counselor myself and a coordinator for counseling is that the students start the process and don't complete it. Something is missing. 
right? And if the whole thing isn't completed, then it's, it's an invalid application. Uh, and we, we do know that it becomes difficult because a lot of the, a lot of the information they're requesting is the, the, the parents' tax forms. And a lot of parents don't want to give up the tax forms and don't want to give up the, that information. If the parents are listening out there, you have to give that information up. Without the tax information, you're not going to receive any financial assistance, whether merit-based or need-based. Am I correct to say that? You're 1000% correct. And we do see that that is an issue. I've seen that over my career, whereas parents simply refuse to do that. I think the good news nowadays is when you complete the FAFSA, uh, those things are linked between the IRS and the FAFSA form. And so that hopefully will cut down on some of the resistance that you see uh, with respect to that issue, because we do know that students are losing a tremendous amount of opportunities and funding opportunities because parents are fearful for whatever reason of giving that or whatever the 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 discrepancy is between the the student and the parent is not working and and parents don't feel that they should give that information up although if they've done everything they need to do particularly with respect to the irs it's already there if you're in on public assistance that information is already there wherever you are the information is already there uh, in most cases and so uh, giving up that information really provides students an opportunity to maximize the financial aid process. So you make a very uh, excellent point. And I think that we we certainly will emphasize that uh, when we meet with students. I, I like to see us work with the curriculum department. I keep saying this and I, I'll say it until, until I leave the district. And that is that some of this stuff needs to be embedded into the curriculum. Absolutely. You just can't leave it up to the students. Absolutely. We already know that our students need to be uh, handheld. We, right. we need to spoon feed them. I don't care what anybody says out there, oh, we shouldn't be holding their hands. Yes, we should. And I right. want to make sure that everybody understands that, that yes, we need to, to treat these kids specially. We, we need to support them. And so somehow we need to be able to, for me, the exercise of filling out the, the FAFSA is, is a technical exercise. Students should get credit for it. It could be a, a, a class assignment, a, 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 a tie it into financial literacy. Uh, we have a financial literacy course that's required that students mm-hmm. take financial literacy. That should be part of the curriculum. It should be part of the, every student who takes financial literacy has to fill out the, the FAFSA. Doesn't mean that they have to complete it, but at least they get to start it because we yeah. can't force parents to give up their taxes, right? But right. you could at least get that process rolling and it becomes a lot easier for, for our, our families. And with that, I will give the, turn it over to <laughs> Mr. Trueheart. Oh, you're doing an excellent job, Fredo, <laughs> with those questions. I, I, I agree. I, I think it should be a part of um, our curriculum, uh, certainly as an assignment to get the students aware and acclimated with uh, the forms that are required. I remember my son, he's 26 now, he graduated Morehouse College, is working now in, in the beginning of his process. It, it's, it's quite an um, arduous process. I mean, you have to dot every I cross every T mm-hmm. to make sure that the information is accurate and providing the right documentation. So I, I think it might be a great opportunity for us to, um, not, if not um, in the classroom, I pray in the classroom, but also um, with help from Mercer County Community College, the work that they're doing, where they're teaching and, and showing the parents and the students how to go through that process, um, as well as uh, on our financial literacy a partnership with uh, African American Cultural Collaborative, we just entered into a partnership with. That could be an item, an idea that we could share with them to have it as a part of their financial literacy initiative as we go forth uh, in November, December, and February uh, throughout the rest of this year and into next year. Uh, Jonathan? Oh, uh, thank you. Well, Freda, you actually brought up a couple of good points I just wanted to touch on. First, if I just go back a little bit. Um, so the Talent Search Program, Mercer County College, and all the programs that they offer um, have been a tremendous support to the high school guidance staff um, in all that they do, because as a school counselor, many of them are um, not necessarily experts in all areas, so they tap into the resources such as Mercer County College. Um, and I, I've been, as you know, I've been in, in other school districts before, and the level of support from outside organizations is unlike anything I've ever seen before as it currently exists at Trenton Central High School. So these kids really have, students really have um, a lot of opportunities 
via their school counselors, then they can be pointed in the direction of, of talent search and, and some other programs. Um, I, I did want to point out, because Mr. Ortiz brings up a really, really great point. In terms of the FAFSA, um, it, it really is an opportunity to be embedded because as you may or may not know, every student in the state of New Jersey as one of their graduation requirements needs to complete a financial aid, I mean a financial literacy course. Therefore, literally having an assignment during the course of the semester that they take that course. And it may be a freshman year, it may be sophomore year, right? It may not be senior. Matter. It's okay, they can, they can do it. Um, uh, some seniors currently, not all, but some seniors are in a what's called college and career planning course. And one of the one of the assignments that the they have five instructors in each of the academies, you know, the academy structure at the high school. Um, so they're supporting students in doing that. Um, but what what Mr. Ortiz had mentioned really makes more sense for us to do a better job and really get in the weeds of the curriculum of a financial literacy course so that a student coming even into coming from middle to high, middle school to ninth grade, even if they take the class that year, they should be able to do this so that they are now more familiar with this process. It then pulls in the parents who feel more comfortable understanding this isn't something that folks are looking to see what I have or don't have and I'm looking for money. This is a real opportunity to get true um, and, and useful and well-deserved financial aid for our students to go on to higher education. So I just wanted, he brings up a really, really, really good point. And we need to do a better job of making sure that we tie in something like the, the FAFSA itself, just the application into potentially an assignment in a financial literacy class, since every one of our students, in order for them to earn a uh, diploma from Trenton Central High School, the financial literacy is one of the specific courses they need to graduate. And Jonathan, I may be wrong, and I'll, and I'll ask the, the, the esteemed panel who know more about this than I do, because I've been away from it for a long time. But even if you are a student that receives a scholarship that's merit-based, whether it's a four-year scholarship that's merit-based, that financial aid office at the college is going to ask you to fill out the financial aid form. So you have to, I believe, I may be wrong, so correct me, uh, Stephen, or or Tasha or Peggy, if I'm you wrong. Are, you, you are 1,000% correct, percent mm -hmm. correct uh, that nothing moves without the FAFSA form, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's an, that's essential. I argue, and I've only, prior to coming to the college, I've been here for a few months now, and I'm glad, thank you, uh, Peggy, for allowing me to come uh, and to share in this community. Um, but the reality is that I, I argue that financial aid is so important, particularly in a first year transition experience, that it is a retention issue when they get to, to, to the, to the four-year school. Because if you're if out of the gate, you owe $4,000 and you don't know where the money is coming from and they're canceling your classes, as we all know, right? If, if we were to uh, uh, fast forward to the first year of college, if they're canceling your classes because you didn't pay the bill because you didn't complete the FAFSA form, you're already at a deficit going into that semester having to uh, you know, make extensions and payment plans and try to get back on track. And so that's a fundamental core issue to this whole retention notion. And so if we're going to retain students, we need to let them know that this whole uh, FAFSA free application for federal student aid is very essential, even if you're ruled out of uh, need-based funding and more into merit-based. And, and by need, we mean that you uh, uh, on public assistance, social security, disability, meet federal income guidelines to receive a Pell Grant, et cetera, as opposed to need-based funding, which there could be a match, we know, uh, where you've done well academically and they're giving you, you know, some type of uh, uh, merit-based money academically. But either way, they're not funding anything without the FAFSA completed. So that's very essential. And I, and I do agree with you, uh, Dr. Ortiz, that it needs to be a part of the curriculum overall. And, and to the credit of Trenton Central High School, to Shell would know even more than I would know, uh, that we've been able to get into those classrooms and, and, and have some of those discussions and begin those discussions. I would also like to very quickly point out, especially if there are parents out here listening, um, the first two words in that acronym are free application, doesn't right. cost anything to fill it out. And right. I don't know if maybe sometimes that keeps folks from when they hear an application, they think it comes with a cost or they need to submit that with some sort of fee. It's a mm -hmm. free application. Right. You know, I have, um, two, oh, 
Oh, go ahead. Who's that? Go ahead, Peggy. Yeah. Um, to show. To show. To show. Two things to what uh, Stephen was saying, um, and really what I was been telling the students these past the past uh, students that graduated two thousand and twenty one and twenty twenty is that they should fill out the FAFSA even if they think their parents make too much, and I, and I say that because with the CARES money, the CARES money that came in because of COVID. If the student never filled out the FAFSA, they have no chance of getting that CARES money. And a lot of colleges had CARES money to give to students, but they had to fill out that form, even if they didn't qualify because their parents made too much or what have you. So um, really pushing the students to fill those, those things, those uh, applications out. Another point too, uh, when it comes to financial literacy, I think even maybe not so much the application when they're in ninth grade, but when it comes to taxes and the IRS, because what I've noticed is a lot of students, their parents are filing taxes the way they're not supposed to. So for instance, if they are married, they should be filing married. If they file, if one parent filed head of household and another one um, filed single, the student will not be able to get financial aid when it comes to that time for them to co go to college. So there's been times where a student had to sit out for a year because they weren't able to complete the FAFSA because their parents didn't file correctly for that. So I think tying that in with the financial literacy, even at the younger grades. So we get them in ninth grade or 10th grade, they have, their parents will then have time to make sure that they're filing correctly. So by the time they become a senior and ready to file for, for financial aid, they won't have any of those issues. So. We received a question from Facebook from Johnette Smart. What if a parent um, doesn't work or never file taxes? How should they proceed with completing the FAFSA? Well, it depends. Uh, <laughs> it depends if, if I'm not mistaken. If you are on disability, if you are on public assistance, so those types of things, that's a different issue than if you were working and you didn't file your taxes. You're, mm -hmm. you're legally required to file any of your, you legally, if you're working and you make a certain amount of money, you are required to file your taxes. If you're on a, a government-based funded program, then that will be documented and you can submit that documentation usually in support of uh, any candidacy. And, and to that point, they would be able to complete the FAFSA because right. you can put in zero if they didn't make anything right. or anything. What was going to happen is they're going to be, they're probably going to be chosen to, for to have an audit or to have to submit additional paperwork. So just having that in mind that even if you put in, you complete the FAFSA, that's not it if they they select you for verification. Right, and that's a random process. That just because mm -hmm. you've been selected for verification doesn't mean that they're coming for you. Uh, it just means so you, you, anybody could be randomly selected mm -hmm. for verification. Uh, that's a normal part of the process. But what is, is important to remind, be reminded that if, for whatever reason, you meet, you don't make that much money. And I'm not suggesting that you don't, I don't know what everybody's situation is, but let's say you're first generation, you don't make that much money, low income, chances are you're gonna maximize your financial aid package. And I think that's what people are missing. There's mo there's plenty of money if you don't have any money. That's it. <laughs> if you have money, there's an issue. Unless you have and you need to see educational <laughs> talent search. <laughs> the less you have, the more you The more get. you get, right. Mm -hmm. The less you right. have, so it's, it's advantage not right. to have too much. So right. that's why I say there's no reason why students should not be getting financial aid. Now Absolutely. we do have another serious issue in the district and that is that a larger population that we have here is not undocumented. So mm -hmm. the financial aid form only applies to students who are citizens of the United States. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Citizens or are permanent residents? Permanent, have permanent residents. Right. right. But they have been here they for five years, correct? To have uh, they don't, to receive, you know, certain services, you have to have residency for five years. No, it, so um, that not necessarily true when it comes to financial aid. As long as you have a, a an alien number or green card, if you just came yesterday, you know, you can actually fill that information out. The issue may then becomes when it comes to the taxes, 
if taxes weren't filed for the, the previous year. But as long as you have a social security number, you have a green card or you've been born here or what have you, you, you have the right to apply for financial aid. But as to um, when it comes to students that are undocumented or if with being in the state of New Jersey, we had the New Jersey Dreamers Act. So yeah. what that means is as long as a student completed at least three years in New Jersey high school and graduates uh, with their degree or their diploma, they can then potentially get financial aid. Now they would have to sign an affidavit saying that once they, they're able to legalize their, their status, they will. And for the young, the young men, they have to, like any other young men, they have to um, sign up for the the, sele the selective service. They have to register for selective yeah. service. That's definitely so, good to know because it it, it's not the case for when they need health insurance. It's not the case right. when they're applying for social services. Right. So that's excellent um, information for parents to know that even if they've only been here a few years, as long as if they've gone to high school, at least three years, they can apply for the financial aid. Yeah, so That's it wouldn't awesome be through the it wouldn't be through the the federal the federal because the FAFSA is federal, but they would then be entitled for New Jersey money as long as they stay in New Jersey, and, and that's a, and that's for for those students. I think Mercer County Community College. Not that I'm um, recruiting for Mercer, <laughs> but uh, that would be a good start because it's a lot less money. And then they potentially can get the CCOB grant, which is the New Jersey right. Community, I forget what the letters mean. Opportunity mean. grant. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so uh, if their family income is less than $60,000, they can go to community college for free. And in this case, it would be Mercer because they live in Mercer County. But you have to complete that FAFSA so that they, because it's called last dollar, so whatever's left over from your financial aid mm -hmm. package, then they supplement that amount. And so, you know, a financial aid package is this, that a package is a, it's a series of things. There's federal money, there's state money, there's institutional money. Uh, there's all oh, types of different packages that come together and not just in state, this could be anywhere in the country, which is, which is to the advantage of what we're doing. Uh, so we need to understand packaging and how that functions. Most people think it's just one thing. I'm just going to get one lump sum. No, it's mm -hmm. like when you go to um, any local restaurant, right? You get your fries, with your whatever, with your drink, whatever, right? So all of these things kind of come together mm -hmm. for people to understand what it is that they're getting and then they assess it and then they make informed decisions, which is what we're here to do, help you make an informed decision mm -hmm. about what move you need to make at a college or university somewhere around the country. One final thing I'd like to say is that what most people don't understand is that colleges need you more than you need the colleges, particularly when you're in this economy, right? Uh, somewhere across this country, a recruiter needs you. Right? The college needs numbers. They can't function without the numbers, right? So if you are a student enough to begin to understand that principle, uh, then you'll you, you'll be able to, to understand how to navigate and leverage what it is that you're bringing to the table, so that you walk into any institution with the maximum advantage the maximum financial aid package and a maximum support system. And that's what we're here to do with educational talent search. Awesome. We had another question come in from D Jones. How do our children get involved with your program and where do parents apply? Well, I'll, I, I guess I'll say <laughs> shortly, feel free. I'm in the cafeteria, come see me in the cafeteria. You know, I'm at your table, right? You know, I come to your table. So when you see Mr. Brian at the table and Mr. Shell, we're usually in the corner of the cafeteria, but you'll see me kind of walking around, handing you an application. We need parents to sign that application, complete that application. Uh, we need students to, to, to get that application. We will be there more often than not uh, getting the information. And, and, and we need that turnaround time. We, we get a lot of yeses, but we need a confirmed yes, which is well, a signature I on an application. Even I got you. I got you a confirmed yes as a parent of eleventh grade student. I uh, my son brought home the talent search information. Oh yeah! I filled out everything. So it is I getting to the other side. I gave it back to him to give back to you guys. So I appreciate uh, you. We got we got one. We got oh, one. Thank so you. Have, you have your six hundred. I'm sure we, we're right there. You know one of the and one, um, and one, also, one, um, one of the interesting things, Peggy, is is you know, the parents, right? How do we get this? I know we talked about 
the financial literacy movement in terms of how we go about uh, introducing financial literacy to, to our parents. But how do we get this information right in front of our parents? You, would you guys, or have you guys done these kind of workshops for parents? And would you, if not, would you consider doing workshops for parents to get an understanding of the, the FAFSA form and what the requirements are and how important this is for their, for their uh, sons and daughters to, to... We have, we've done them at the high school, um, at the, with the old high school building on Chamber Street. We did them in the evening. We didn't get so, um, our turnout was very, very few, even though the, the uh, high, high school counselors were there also. Um, so that didn't seem to work well, but we're open for any, um, any suggestions that you have for us to, to get this information to, to um, parents. Um, we've tried to work with the, um, I don't know if it's called PTO anymore. Um, yeah. Is it still called? We've tried to work with them to um, arrange workshops for parents, but we're open to any suggestions because it is vital that parents get this information. Can you re repeat one more time for those who have joined a little bit later? What schools are you in? Okay, we are in Trenton Central High School, um, Ninth Grade Academy, Daylight Twilight, and we've worked with um, Dunn Middle School also. Those are our target schools. And, and going back to the point where parents want to know how they can get involved, we do, you know, thanks to COVID, we do have an online application <laughs> that we can also send out, send out a link. And we've been doing that too with some of the students. We give them the paper option, but then we also have a, a QR code that they can scan and do the application online as well. Um, so we have that option where we can definitely, I'll, I'll grab that link and put it in the um, put it in the chat and so that you can add it where you need to add it. Uh, so that's also an option as well. Awesome, we did have another question come in. If a student wants to go to a trade school, should they fill out a FAFSA? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you need the FAFSA starts everything because at the end of the day, there's tuition that's being charged no matter where you go. Uh, and so that that's very essential to fill out the uh, free application, free application for federal student aid, and that will facilitate uh, the payment because that's what happens in the process. You, you complete the form, if you meet a certain income guideline, then they, the, 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 the federal government, the state government, whoever it is, wherever you're going, based on where you're headed, if you're staying in New Jersey, the federal government might send you a Pell Grant to go to that particular institution. The state will, might kick in the SEOG or whatever it is they're going to pay. And then the institution will, will, will kick in funding. So it's important to complete the FAFSA form. My niece uh, completed her FAFSA form and she's a a certified cosmetologist and a licensed clinical social worker, right? So <laughs> she's got both ends covered uh, and making money in both of those areas. So, so that's very important, particularly uh, in the trades as well. There's one other component and I want you again to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and this is why it's really important to work with your school counselors, to work with, with the uh, right. TRIO team because sometimes our students get really excited and they wanna go to, to uh, some uh, computer tech school right, some IT school, and right. they're private schools. So mm -hmm. those schools do not qualify for financial assistance. So we gotta make sure that you get good counseling because it doesn't make sense for you to pay $24,000 to go for a one-year program at a private school when you could get that for free or minimal at a community college. So mm -hmm. that's where you folks come in because they have to understand that this is for public programs, right, is and for private colleges, but you have to be certified institution to qualify for the Pell money. Yeah, so right. there's some, there some trade, stu trade schools that you can get fund, uh, federal, federal money, but uh, keep in mind that the max you can get is 6,000, and I forget the, the rest, but 6,300 or something like that from the federal government. If the program is twenty four thousand, now you have a, a significant right. deficit. Even if they give you, right. if you max out your federal money, right. you still have a lot you have to pay. So what I try to tell students is, um, there's nothing wrong with trade school, but you have to be mindful of the trade that you're going to the trade school for. Right. If it's like if you want to do cosmetology, some, take cosmetology for example. Right. 
So cosmetology, that's one, one of those things is where there's not a lot of community colleges that have cosmetology. So now if that's something that you really want to do, you have to really like look in to see how you're going to pay for that and go into a trade school. But now if you're talking about you want to go be a, you want to be an LPN, I don't know if going to a trade school and spending $40,000 would be the best route because where are you going to get that money from? So a lot of times students, they want to get in and get out. They don't want to have to do the English classes and all those things. So I see the caveat for going to a trade school, but it all depends on the trade that you're going for. Right. And, and, and that I certainly agree with that. I've, I've often said to students, we live in a society that values credentialing. And so it's important to understand that credentialing is going to be a part of the process. Mm -hmm. So whether you get a trade uh, certification and or a college degree. I've often said to students, you know, you need a college degree just to be rejected because without it, you won't be considered, right? Mm -hmm. So there is this point that comes where someone's eventually going to say, man, if only you had that associates, if only you had that bachelor's, if only you had this, we could put you in this particular position. And so it's a process that kind of that kind of leaves you out of it unless you're credentialed into it. And so at this point where you're probably eligible for maximum financial aid, you want to take advantage of this moment. Because if you miss the moment and you make money, let's hyper say hypothetically you're 19 and you make 30,000, you say that's pretty good for a 19 year old. I don't differ with that. Where I differ is when you want to go back to school and they tell you over the income guideline, then there's an issue. And now you have to consider other alternative ways to fund your education where you can maximize the moment now and, and, and make things happen for yourself. When you talk about Peggy, when you talk about in, in all the panels, when you talk about uh, career exploration, um, and our students uh, determining what type of career they want to go into. Um, you said a lot of our students already have a career career track in mind. Uh, what are some of the career tracks that our students that in your group of students that you work with, what are some of the top key uh, career tracks that they're going into in terms of secondary uh, and going on to the master's? I'm going to defer to you, Tichelle and, and Stephen. <laughs> I was going to say, based off of what the students have been, as, as for those that have gotten their bachelor's or their master's, I'm not really sure exactly like what field they're go they have gone into or they decided to go into. But a lot of times students, they say they want to be a nurse. A lot of those medical fields, a lot of psychologies where we kind of, when they say psychology, I'm like, OK. Now let, 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 let's think about this. Let's think Thank about you. what do you right. want to do with psychology? Because right. if you come out with a bachelor's degree in psychology, right. that's right. so big, so broad. Right. What, what do you want to do? So we have deeper conversations on when they say something like psychology. I'm like, okay. And then you get some that say, okay, I want to go on and get my master's. And then I'm like, okay, you have really thought about this. But then there are some that is, I just want to do psychology because it seemed like an easy degree or easy uh, program to a bit easy major in college. So we have those deeper conversations. So um, it's mainly like psychology or we have the nursing. Sociology. Right. Sociology as well. Right. Yeah. So you're looking at a lot of those liberal arts programs, which suggest that you will need an advanced degree eventually in order to be to really maximize uh, that 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 degree opportunity. Like you were saying, nursing, a lot of people say, well, I want to be a nursing major. Well, have you had your biology courses? Mm -hmm. That's important to understand because, you know, being accepted into a school is <laughs> doesn't mean you've been accepted into the program. It means you've been accepted into the school. Right. And now you have to apply for admission into the nursing program. And what does that really mean? I've told students over the years, you're in a non-committed relationship with the nursing program until they say that you are in the program, right? And so you need to understand as students, and this is the value of what Educational Talent Search does. Uh, we're not here to kill your dream. We're here to embolden your dream. We're here to help you get there. I like but that. from a more pragmatic perspective <laughs> and understanding your enterprise and your contribution to it, and then how you can maximize that and have the institution love you so much that they take you all the way to the top. There's, there's foundation money. There's a, don't get me started. A, I, 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 I'll start right here. There's a whole lot of opportunities out there in a lot of different career fields. You just need to know how to maximize it. And we do, do that certainly through the Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics, et cetera, to help students really know what the money looks like and what the opportunities look like, and more importantly, how to get there at this stage. One of the interesting things that I found in Trenton Central High School is a great is our small learning communities, right? So when my son registered uh, to come into Trenton Central High School, 
he had to decide uh, what what particular small learning community that he was interested in. And so right then and there, uh, there is um, some thinking and a process of thinking in the student's mind in terms of, well, I want to go in restaurant and business. Do I want to go into nursing and hospitality? Do I want to go into STEM? You know, do I want to go into automotive? Uh, so we're already um, kind of channeling those students right. to look at and make decisions about their careers even before they graduate mm -hmm. uh, from, from high school. So I'm hoping that that helps in the, the, the talent or the talent, the uh, career exploration portion of the work that you guys are doing and the thinking mm -hmm. around that work. Yeah, it narrows it down for sure, uh, as opposed to just a random generalized curriculum you know, that specialized approach really empowers the student. And I've seen that walk into your tables. I've seen that with, you say, oh, I'm interested in, you know, going into business with a restaurant. I'm interested in this program or that program. And so that's, a, I, I think that's a major improvement to the overall structure as opposed to the general uh, uh, high school requirements. Another, another question, uh, Peggy, in terms of uh, students that have dropped out of, of, of school, uh, or those students that, that want to come back. I'm, I'm only reading this from, from some of the literature that I have on the talent search program. How, are you addressing those, those students as well? Yes, we're, every month we reach out to, um, I think it was Miss, I can't remember her name, but there was an office there at, at the high school and we get a list of students that have um, dropped out and then we, um, we start reaching out to them to see if there's anything that we can do to help them um, get back into um, a high school. Um, we do the same thing for students that have dropped out of um, post-secondary education. You call that, I'm reading, you call that college, it looks like college stopouts. Yes. And the high school dropouts. So I, I just think that's so very important that folks understand that they're our outreach efforts uh, at Mercer County Community College through, the upper, through a TRIO uh, the, uh, Educational Talent Search Program that is reaching out to uh, high school students that dropped out and also college students that dropped out to, to kind of pull them back and, and redirect them and try to help them to get back on track, whether it be high school or, or in college. So I think that's, uh, that's a great um, benefit for, for our city and the work that you do at Mercer County Community College. Uh, Denise, any more comments or questions from, from Facebook? That's it. That concludes our show. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, we have about three minutes left, uh, almost four minutes left. I have some closing comments from uh, Peggy, from Tashell, and from Stephen, and then we'll have our closing comment from our, super, our Assistant Superintendent of School Support, Wilfredo Ortiz. Uh, Peggy? Okay, well, um, educational talent search, um, you can be, become a part of a huge family of scholars um, from pre-college, middle school, all the way up to a doctoral degree. Um, so please reach out to us. Um, we are here um, to shell, Mr. Shell and Mr. Bryant are in the schools during the week. They're usually there Monday through Thursdays. I think they've also been there this month on a couple of Fridays, but it's normally Mondays through Thursdays. And they're in the, they're in the cafeteria and they're reaching out to you. So please do um, join our program, it's free. Yeah, um, I, I look forward to the students. Hopefully there's some students watching and they're like, oh, I saw you on TV. Like, yeah, that was me. You know, um, we promise we don't bite. We're not going to hurt you. You know, come up. You can say hello. You can ask your questions. We're very open to to answer. And helping you, the, our main goal is to help you to be as successful as you want to be and get you to where you want to be. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll just say that... Uh... As I said, all, I'm on your side. It just doesn't sound like it, right? I'm telling you things you may not want to hear at 18 that will come back at 28, right? I'm going to be right 10 <laughs> years from now. You know that, right? But I don't want to be right. I want you to be successful at this moment in time. So we look forward to seeing you at the table. We look forward to seeing you in your classrooms. Wherever you are, we're going to be there to help you in this process. Just get those applications. Thank you, Mr. Dr. True. Thank you for getting that done. So parents, we need your signatures on those applications so that we can move the process forward. And we look forward to work with everybody. Hey, my, my co-host, Denise Kreese, any closing comments? 
Tune in next week. Uh, we'll be having a conversation with our All Kids Thrive grant partners who have been working side by side with many schools to help reduce barriers of chronic absenteeism. Our supervisor of uh, college and career readiness, so, Mr. Simone. Sure, thanks. The, only, the last thing I would say is for any parents that are out listening, um, please reach out to your student's school counselor um, at the various schools so we can get you in touch with folks uh, in these programs. Um, you probably have a, a, a connection with your school counselor. If you don't, that's your first, first line. And if not, you can always reach out to me as I supervise all the school counselors in the district. Mr. Alfredo Ortiz, closing, closing comments, Assistant Superintendent of School Support. Uh, thank you, Gerald. I just wanna to say to the parents, there, there's no excuse why a student cannot go to college. The, because if you have a lot of money, then it's easy to, to go to college. You can pay for it. If you have little money, then that's even easier because you can get financial assistance. What you have to do is you got to get aggressive and you got to you got to want it. You got to want it desperately enough to go out and do what you have to do to get that, that degree. And we're here to help you. I also want to mention that we have a lot of jobs available for those parents out there who need a little income. We're looking for bus aides. We're looking for substitute teachers. Our substitute teachers are getting paid as much as $250 a day if they're in the areas of like special ed or bilingual. We need paraprofessionals. So get your degree from Mercer Community College. With 60 hours, you can be a paraprofessional in the district. Uh, we need bus drivers. So the custodial workers, part-time custodial workers that pay as much as I think close to $18 an hour. So, and you don't need a college degree or a diploma, or you need a diploma in some of these, but not in all of the, the, uh, the jobs. So look online, uh, reach out to, to us so that we can help you get employed if you wanna make some extra money. All right, thank you, Mr. Ortiz. We've been listening to WIMG 1300 AM with Trenton Talks, uh, Trenton TV radio broadcast. We're so thankful uh, for our special guests, our panelists from James Kearney, Campus of Mercer County Community College Educational Talent Search. Uh, Director Peggy Brown, thank you so much for being here. Uh, counselor Stephen Bryant um, and, count, and Counselor um, Peggy, Peggy Bryant and Counselor Tichelle Walters. Hey, <laughs> I'm glad, glad, good to meet each and every one of you. First time meeting you guys and look forward to you guys coming back on a, a future broadcast as we continue to roll out our broadcast, like you come back, uh, share some more on TRIO. Uh, we look forward to also having the Upward Bound TRIO uh, program come back and share some information with us with Director, with Director Stacy Denton. Uh, so, so thankful. So thanks all of you for being here. You all have a good night and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.